Here I go again. So from a previous video and a previous video regarding the NHS, regarding the integrated care board, the ICB. Uh, they've obviously watched one of the videos and obviously come to me and now they want me to have a meeting for this indigenous, dig, digginess, I don't know how to say the word right. Uh, it's, a, it's a budget. So now this budget is what they offer a lot of people um, and it can work for a lot of people. It, it's a care budget. Um, however, my son, they already know before they even start with him that this budget is not going to be enough money and they're going on about top ups and they're going on about this and they're going on about that. I'm still going on about the last near enough five years coming up in March next year about how they have left my son. They let a nursing agency come in, they broke six ventilators, they ripped out five SBCs, super beauty care catheters, straight from his insides. Um, uh, what else did they do? They caused two pressure sores, left ankle. Uh, they are in videos, but I didn't show the, the bad, bad ones and how bad it really, really got. Uh, what else did they do? Oh, Let's just say they nearly killed my son, right? I nearly got the blame for all these six pack ventilators. Well, I'm sorry, but I know ventilators from inside out near enough. And I'm not taking the blame anymore for the NHS and their failures. The CQC are just as bad. I was a CQC registered manager until obviously the NHS made me look after, made me look after my son. Like they make a lot of other mummies, daddies, whatever. And they don't realise the stresses and strains what they give to people. And obviously half of them die. Most people die. The NHS don't care. The ICB don't care. The government don't care. Well, why don't, it, why don't they put themselves for one minute in my shoes or someone else's shoes? And pff, let's just say... It happened to their kids, it happened to their whatever, uh, parents, dads, mums, whatever. See how they would like it. See how they have to give 24-7 care. See how exhausted they'd be, do you know what I mean? But I bet they'd still have care. I bet they'd have private care. Anyway, going from one of my other videos to obviously this, this rant about, and it is a proper rant because... I'm not, I'm not kidding now. I don't know how I've got this far with my son without him being died, being killed off. Killed off meaning of all the complications that I've had to look after because there's no surgeon for him. Because they won't let him go back to his hospital that knows my son. Right? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drive all the way a few hundred miles to this hospital and go to A&E to actually get him seen by some surgeons, by, um, you know, by the surgeons that used to look after them, but under one hospital, because here up north is, they're killing him. They've, they've nearly killed my son. Oh, I've had that many, uh, we've been in that many hospitals. He can't, his body can't take no more. What do these people understand? I'm upset because I don't know how I mean, many more parents have to go through this. Hundreds, hundreds. I know, I know a, a few are really, really suffering. And, um, and one of the children died. No care. So, why and a Britain not giving out right assessments to the right, correct children, adults, whatever they're doing? Instead, they're giving the wrong people to the wrong 
so for someone like my son, he's got a children's nurse, right, who has done an assessment. Now, a children's nurse to an adult, it, I'm sorry, if, if my, my if Ben, my son, was a child, where, which he was with a trachea and everything, he had tubes coming out of everywhere, then fair enough, have a children's nurse. But this, this nurse, I don't know, for four years I've argued with her. You know who you are. And I know you watch my videos. So at the end of the day, why don't you go back, like I've told you, I don't know how many times, go back to your board, go back to your managers, go back to whoever, and give my son his life back. He deserves life. Not this, staying in a house, being locked up where there's two disabled people that struggle. I can't keep struggling with my son. I've had to use every part of my bones to look after my son and I'm smothered in this osteoporosis. So what do they expect me to do? Just keep sitting, waiting to die. Because that's what me and my son are doing. Probably like a lot of, you know, thousands or hundreds of, of other families. We sit at home. We don't go out. Obviously, we had that little caravan holiday. Um, we went and then we did go and have another little tiny holiday with my aunt and my uncle. But after that, it's nothing. After that, I'm exhausted. After that, I'm fed up. He has just had three months, right? 12 solid weeks, if not more. I don't know how long I've been at it with him. Of problems. Problems with his urine. Problems with his... Um, Catheters, we can't get the right catheter to go in that, that will stay in there. I can't, he, I can't. He had his breathing go down. He had his, he's just, he's just had everything go wrong with him. And the support from the doctors have been zero, nothing. I'm like, I have begged. I've even had my HR. We've we've done everything. Even I had to get my son, who's been really poorly, on the phone to the doctors for them to listen to him. But they don't listen. And then they're going, oh, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. You know what? By the time they've waited for my son, he'd be dead. If it wasn't for me, he will be dead. If it was not for my experience in theatres with... How, how can I put this with absolutely everything that I do know. He would not be here. He would be in a coffin six foot under. And I've had enough of this country letting people down or killing them because they don't have the care. And they are killing them because killing someone means if you're leaving them, right, and they have a duty of care to them, the government have a duty of care to, or to people like my son. And they're letting him down like they are now, big time, nearly five years in. From from the COVID days, this has been from the March 2020. And I'm going to keep putting them up till they put the right care into my son. That's if he survives it. This is the worst bit. How can I keep trying to do things with my son? Right? I'm just about my head blown. It's blown because I don't know how many people I get to watch this video. I don't really care because at the end of the day, if you were in my shoes, would you as a mother let your son die? I've fought tooth and nail for my son. I, I have been in most hospitals around this country. I am disgusted with the services that, that we have right now, which is... On a scale of one to ten, it's a zero. Uh, because you've got doctors, you've got nurses, you've got surgeons, you've got people that don't know what they're doing. Um, and when I mean that, I really, really, truly mean it this time. I mean, when the last hospital we went in with my son, right, I thought, great, they're going to know what they're doing. Six days, six nights in, forget it. I had to, I had to bring him there myself. He had to sign himself out because the doctor wanted to amputate his leg off, his left leg.
And then he stuck him on an unlicensed drug. And then he fucked my son up. And then that's what's happened the last 12 weeks. They gave him the same drug. I didn't know. I'm trying to trust these people. I cannot keep doing what I'm doing, right? Fighting up against these people. And they are not listening. So my, do you know what my son wants me to do, my son? This is silly, but this is what he wants me to do, take him down up to Parliament and for him to be heard. And if he's not heard, he says, strap him. Strap him up, he says. Strap his wheelchair. I mean, that's just a joke, right? On his ventilator. Because I've says you've only got eight hours battery on it, Ben. But that's how he feels because no change is happening. And now they're off it, offering another little little budget for him. Well, that, that means that's my life again gone because that budget, that means that I've got to manage that budget. Right? Or manage his whatever kind of care. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what this all means. They're coming out on the 12th. Um, obviously, I don't really want to see him after four, after all this time, after being on teams meetings after after doing a lot of fighting for my son and then they, they decided they want to come out on the 12th pick their own day why don't they don't don't pass it through me just pick your own day and come out um because i still don't think it's going to get sorted it will not get sorted because it's not going to be enough money for my son so now they've come up with this other way because we can't use care providers in britain because let me just tell you about care providers in Britain. Half of them need shutting down. And I know that because I was a CQC registered manager. I've worked, I've worked, I've breathed, I've lived healthcare. Right. And so you've got, you've got your CQC, the governing body over hospitals, doctors, all that. Do you think they're doing their duty of care? No. And as an ex-CQC registered manager, I would go up against the CQC and say to them, you are failing in your duties to the general public again, right? They're overrun. They haven't got enough people. They are absolutely failing. The same as safeguarding. You want to safeguard someone in this country, forget it, right? You, I safeguarded my son. And nothing happened. They went they went with the, the people that actually nearly killed him. So it was okay because my son survived it, basically. So safeguarding, right, in, in Britain, you might as well not bother doing. And the CQC need to kick up the backside. The government need to kick up the backside because they've ruined the NHS. But it was ruined prior to the C19, right? But it's got worse. And as for education with them all, they all need more training. You don't have... Listen, I sat in that room with my son and I was gobsmacked to know that his foot... He's, he's, he's having it amputated. He's having his leg amputated to his knee. Um, and that was due to blood flow. And that is due to... Um, lack of care, not care in my care, lack of care from their side because they didn't do nothing about it. They didn't even tell me what he'd got wrong with him. I didn't even know. Um, so they've kept this from me, like they keep everything else from everybody, you know. It's just absolutely horrific what they're doing to people. Um, so basically, they're still making mistakes. My son became paralysed due to, he came at Christopher Reeves due to the NHS. And then they've took the money back. You know, it's kind of like, give it in one hand, take it back in the other. He was nine years old when they did that to him. And I'm ranting and ranting and ranting because I'm at the end of my tether with everybody and everybody, lawyers. And it, it, they, this is all you get with this system. And, you know, when I look in my son's eyes daily and I'm having to look after him, it's not fair. It shouldn't be like that. He used to get proper care um, with my own company, believe it or not. That was the only care that he got with. What, what kept him safe? 
And, and in Birmingham, forget it, in Birmingham, they nearly killed him there. So wherever we've moved to, they can't deal with him because so, he's so complex. So why don't they listen to me? They don't listen to nobody. We wrote to the government. You, pff, forget that. That's another subject. Back in that day, my we helped them all out there. And do, 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 do they care? No, they don't care. And I am now. I'm, I'm going to fight back more and more and more and more and more. I've already started. I started with solicitors. And I had a dodgy solicitor who was with their, the, the NHS's solicitor. So why am I going to carry on with that solicitor? Then she accused me of being a gypsy. You know, there's all this absolute BS that's going on in this country. Right, you scratch my ass, I'll scratch yours. That's what it's like. And they don't like it. They don't like They can't stand me. Um, and I don't care. I really, really don't care. Because I'm going to keep, keep putting these videos and giving them to the NHS, to the doctors, to everybody. Because they are... Disgusted to the government need to a big kick up the backside. They actually we need some truthers in them in that government because and we need someone to take over the healthcare properly because look at the state of it. Nobody wants to work in NHS. You've got your NHS nurses that have gone working it. Other places, private, because they get back paid sixty five pound an hour and it's up to eighty five pound an hour. And what do you get from the NHS? Pittance, thirteen pound fifty to be um, well it's probably gone up now. It was thirteen pound fifty to be just a, a, a not a ward nurse, just a nurse basically, um, looking after it, you know, on or all your other nurses. What a disgrace that that pay is, and this is why they're failing, because there is no training. There's no correct, that all it is is basic training. And then, you know, there's not enough people to know about spinal brain injury. Um, every hospital should know about everything. I've changed policies in different hospitals. You know, I've had to rant and rave wherever I've gone. I'm absolutely sick of ranting and raving and actually helping put in these hospitals and policies and procedures and God knows what, you know. But my son has to die for it. Is that good enough? 